before we get started, I just want to thank a couple friends. Uh, of course, our friends at Comic Barricade, number one solution for keeping the comics away from the dreaded spine tick. Uh, great way to organize, support, and stabilize your collection. Um, use the code word FLIPSIDE for 10% off your order, and shipping is free as always. Also, thank our friends at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, best free place for content, uh, the home of the hot 10, as well as dollar bin digging and uh, a fisherman's tale, some other great articles. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get showing some books. because that's what people came here to see. Um, let's go with uh, let's go with Matt first, because, well, sometimes we never know what he's going to do. Never forget. Never forget. them. OK, <laughs> uh, for my first, I'm going to show a book. It's not that it's necessarily so valuable, but it is just so goddamn interesting. This is a golden age Chinese, particularly from Hong Kong, and it is just such a cool image. Is that a and, floating uh, city? It's like a floating city. I believe this translates to something like a thousand years after the end of the world or something like that. And uh, I just love this little digest book. It is just super cool. It's from the, like I said, it's golden age. So I think it's either late 40s, early 50s. And um, it was the, definitely the most interesting buy of the year for me. Still trying to find the American equivalent or British equivalent. There was a lot of British sci-fi back then too. There was actually, I think, a lot of sci-fi um, all over the world uh, that was getting produced in little sci-fi uh, comic strips and whatnot. So I don't really know where it is from, uh, the original story. But um, are, you, are, you sure, are you sure it's a Western story? Not a pretty, complete? I think, I think it is. Just I mean, looking it, at the art? Just looking at the art, it looks like a Western story to me. It does not look like it uh, originated in Hong Kong, in China. Okay. But um, yeah, that's my first. That's nice. That's, a, that's the first. Yeah, that's one. awesome. Extremely right. nice. Well, starting out with uh, something extremely obscure. I'm gonna head it off to, to Rob's comics for uh, the next one here. What you got? I have a Brazilian horror. Oh, you're coming into Josh and I's territory here. Yeah. <laughs> you, better, you better back off, man. There's turf wars going on. Yeah. yeah, done by a world uh, Brazilian famous artist, Jaime Cortez, or say Jaime Cortez. You see the yeah. signature right there in white. He normally does it in white, but uh, I bought this because it was uh, extremely graphic, of course, with the blood and the translucent man in the grave. But it's definitely a, a sweet book. It was a decent price, and I said, you know what? I can't let Josh and and Matt have all the fun, so I had to jump in. <laughs> yeah. I love I, that. I could go broke buying Cortez, so I have to stay away or I'll, I'll just own it all. Like yeah. like uh, our friend Pee Wee here. And this Milo doesn't do it any justice. It looks really nice. The colors are still pretty much printed. I think the year of this is what, uh, Josh, probably like around the 60s? Yeah, it's probably early 60s. So one of kind of the later ones. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful, Rob. Yeah, nice book. Thank you. Brazil apparently la like their horror a little longer than the US did. The code didn't Definitely. didn't affect them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Josh, what'd you bring us today? All right. So for my first book, I'm gonna do this guy. What do you have there? Let's see. Oh, that's a Greek. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of those rare Greeks, Josh. The, found one. The Witchcraft yeah. 2 cover, even. Yeah. So in Greek, this is Witch. Little Mask. Um, they contain early, like, American pulp stories inside of them. So hmm. unfortunately, it's not the Witchcraft 2 story, but it is a redrawn Witchcraft 2 cover. Uh, and, nobody cares about the story. Yeah, and Greek's been the only country I've actually been able to find this cover, so that was pretty sweet. Yeah, that beautiful. is cool, man. It's 
super cool. It looks off center too, like you kind of have it moved a little bit to the to the one side. Yeah, yeah, they were. That was done. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure Gabriel said like in the mid 50s. So that was a few years after. Huh. Gabe would know. Gabe would know. I'm gonna go with uh, this one first, so it's gonna force me to make a difficult decision. So. <laughs> I'm going to go with, to by far, not the most expensive book I bought, but just one of my favorites, Mary oh, Marvel. Man, mm -hmm. Covered a Mary Marvel uh, 10, which is one of the most kind of beautiful ones there with that butterfly with all of the vibrant colors. I don't actually own a which U.S. Is copy, which is sad, but uh, this one popped up at a reasonable price. Uh, it's not high grade because the spine is beat to heck, um, but man, the cover itself looks amazing. Great color. You what? Oh, sorry. But yeah, big I fan of Mary vibrant. Marvel. Oh yeah, the it has better colors than I've seen in most of the American copies. So very oh, happy. Yeah, that's a that's a great one. All right, Matt, we're gonna let you go again. I'm not okay. Sure a good idea, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> it's a great idea because I got a great fucking book. Cuentos de Bruja, number three, file copy. This is a Dell file copy. And um, I couldn't believe it that I when I bought this book. when I knew it was nice, but when I actually put it in my hands, I mean, it is – I'm not really that big on slabbing books, but if I was a slabber, this would definitely go into a slab. Mm -hmm. That's one that you think about. Yep. It is gorgeous. I mean, with a press – I don't know, man. We it could at least it, I think it'd get an eight, maybe an eight five. But um, considering how old this book is, this is the third comic printed by La Prenza. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> the Cuentos de Brujas were the very first books printed by La Prenza. So the number one, you know, Witches Tales one. Uh, this is three in their run, but it's actually Witches Tales two. But uh, yeah, this I I knew that this was going to be one of the books for my end for the end of the year show because it's just too too beautiful. Too yeah, beautiful. it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's definitely nice. And it's horror, which you know I I this year I I dipped my toes into a lot more horror because hanging out with you guys. Yeah, you got to yeah. dabble. The degenerates <laughs> will do that to you. <laughs> yep, that, that's that's what's happened, man. All right, we're gonna let Rob show off what he's got. I'm sure he brought something amazing to follow that up. Yep, I am showing you guys Uncanny X Men number four in Egypt. Nice, it's, that's sweet. As you can tell, it's a CBCS slab, but this is not the reason I'm showing you this book. I'm showing you this book because we always preach about community, right? So, uh -huh. one of the founding fathers of Horn Comics, he actually got a commission because ASM 301's on the back. It's not really oh, a book, wow. it, but the artwork is there from McFarlane. He had, he had Michelini sign it, and he had it commissioned. So this silver one here is drawn by the artist, and he wrote it in Egypt again, Egyptian again, up top. Oh, so wow. I think I might take it a step further and get, oh, I'm sorry, it's uh, Dave Michelini and Bob McLeod signed it. So both of them signed it. The signature's wow. right there next to Spidey. Wow. And then I, uh, I think I might see him sign it too. And wow. believe it or not, true story. Hector Banda bought this from me when I had it in my lot from uh, Egypt. And he had a commission and I bought it back. We kind of laugh about it now, <laughs> but it changed. I bought the book first, then he got a commission, then I bought it back later. So that's awesome. That's that thing about community we talk about. Yep. <laughs> that, you're that's exactly good. right. And Hector Banda, man, he is the founder of the set building style of collecting. One of there's two. But yeah, he's a he's a legend. Owning any book from Hector is a joy. You're owning a piece of history. Yep. So this is definitely one of the bigger pickups. So thank you, Hector, if you watch this. That's Very huge, nice. bro. That's yeah, beautiful. That's awesome. I want to pause for a second and give a shout out to our friends at Parallel Urban in 
Istanbul, Turkey. They have come out with an awesome Steranko homage to the uh, King Size Hulk 1. It is the variant printings for their Immortal Hulk trade paperback volume 1. There are redrawn homages by Yildri Sinar. The traditional one is a print run of 500. There is a black and white edition that is limited to only 250. And the one is really going to knock your socks off is limited to 500. It is the Gray Hulk, but it's a glow-in-the-dark. I mean, a glow-in-the-dark homage to one of the most famous Hulk covers out there. Um, so get them while you can. There are only 500. As I said, the black and white only have 250. Uh, we'll put some links in the bio to uh, let you know where you can get it. Josh, I don't know how to follow that one up because that, that was a freaking beauty. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go. Oh. There oh. We go. Right. oh, Horowitz Love, baby. Yeah. So I, I got this at the end of the year. Um, this is Avengers 1. It's from Horowitz in Australia. It's from nice. 1965. So it's two years after the American. Um, the cover is a mishmash of interior panels that they redrew and put on the cover. Nice. Yeah, but I'm, colors I'm, on there are so vibrant and, and wild. I'm glad that it showed up safe because the seller mailed it in nothing. They just threw it in an envelope. Oh, <laughs> and my God. Yeah. Nightmare. But, yeah. Now, well, Obert had a better to... chance of not dying in that, though. Yeah, it, it. I opened it and I was like, <gasps> "That seller needs to be shot. He needs to be taken out back, put up against a wall, and shot." Hey, this is uh, it, it's it's what it is, man. You deal with international sellers, you never know what you're yep. getting. Yep. You never do. I mean, but something that beautiful. I mean, most Aussie collectors know how rare the Horowitz stuff is. I'm sorry, but I if, if he yeah. didn't know to at least put that book in a bag. Maybe it wasn't a collector, guys. Somebody just maybe, had maybe, it. It wasn't a collector. It was... Oh, uh, he wasn't? Okay, well, that... No, was it was either his dad, his yeah. dad's collection or his grandpa's collection, and they had passed, and he inherited it and was going through it and yeah. selling it off, so I don't think he had any idea. <sighs> he saved on well, shipping. That's what that was. Yeah. Wow. We, should get, we should get like wow. a huge blinking banner in the center right here that says nightmare alert yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a beautiful book though the condition looked great too josh it, it's it's decent it's it's nowhere the highest graded one's an 80 so that, yeah. there's there's nowhere going near that yeah that's crazy very cool pickup. or cgc cgc all right. Nice. So this is one I'm sharing. I, I mean, I bought a ton of great Silver Age Brazilian from uh, a lot of it from our friend Victor, who does a great job finding stuff. And uh, he found some gems. This one, though, uh, is just extraordinary. I mean, I don't wow. think it's, it's not like the U.S. where it's a 9.8, but man, it is going to be in the I think in the eights, eight pluses. But what's amazing, this is the one I showed you guys. You've said before, if there's not signs of rust on the uh, staples, you've probably got a problem. Yep. But they are the cleanest staples I've ever seen. They appear original. Um, pages are just, I mean, they're the whitest pages I've ever seen out of Brazil. Yeah, I mean, that you can see the even the white on the cover. I mean, it's white. Yeah. Yes, I mean, Brazil is usually... White means off white at best. And you know, mm -hmm. there's a couple of little smudges on the spine here and a little a little bit of schmegma up at the top. But I mean otherwise it is as nice a book as I've seen come out of Brazil. So are you gonna get it graded, John? Uh probably at some point. I'm not in a rush. Now let me get this straight. That's the first Legion of Superheroes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Legion of Superheroes. Um Fun book. I, I had a U.S. copy. I let it go because it was not particularly nice. So now I may have to may have to pursue another one. Yikes! <laughs> that's, a, that's a killer book, man. Killer, mm -hmm. killer, John. Extremely nice. Thank you. 
Uh, Matt, what do you got now? Oh, okay. This one for me, when it arrived, I was like, oh, shit, man. It's it's a biggie. Oh, you. I know that makes you mad, huh, John? Not well, mad. Because you know, right? I have to follow that. <laughs> this is a Navarro, Mexican Navarro, first Mr. Freeze. And I think the... the, the my world is a little bit. I mean, this thing is stunning it, for a lot of reasons. One, the rarest shit. We, I think we've seen maybe a total of a little under ten. So I think this was like maybe the eighth or ninth copy that we've that we've seen pop out. Um, so it's rare. But then on top of that, it's in damn nice condition for being as old as it is. We know because of the stamp that it was a, one, a book that made its way to Spain. So it's got the Juvenil stamp. So mm -hmm. the Navarros that were sold in, in uh, Spain all got this uh, Revista Juvenil stamp. And on that stamp, it also had uh, the price in pesetas. Um, stunning book. I, I am, Every time I look at it, I'm in awe. I've always liked Mr. Freeze um, as a villain. I've always liked this book in the American run. And boom, baby, that's that's a biggie. Very that's a big nice. One. Nice. Rob, I'm sorry you have to follow that one. That one's a, that's a, that's a beast. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm um. I'm, I think I might have something that could test with that. You know, I want to have an honorable mention. This is my runner-up. You know. Yeah. This was acquired by my friend Josh, my uh, fellow podcaster on the to the left of me. But I have to say that you know, once I first got into forums, I saw this book probably within the first month of being into it, and I was like, I know that's not Storm, even though it says it. But I was like, I need to have that book just because of the discoloration of it. And uh, Josh, I'm gonna give you total credit on this one because you know the clear backing board. It helps you really look at the book a little bit closer. Oh, I love the clear backing boards. Josh, yeah, is, Josh has really done well with that. Yeah. So um, to kind of have a competition with Matt, you know, that was my honorable mention. But my pickup <clears throat> of the year has to be this. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Old Gary Men's style number eighty-eight on the inside is all winners number seven. And uh, this is the second cover appearance in Brazil of Captain America. Got Bucky over here on the side. Now, this is a B copy because the back cover is missing, but this was a wraparound. There's another side to this. But uh, this is a grail for me as a Captain America fan. So I had when I had the chance to buy it, all those books that you guys see me selling to like, all the other collectors and they mentioned me, I was doing that to save for this. Mm -hmm. And this is the one thing about this community that I love that we're all getting the books that we want through community. So this is the community win. Yep. That's wow. a winner too. Amazing. <clears throat> that is crazy. Amazing, yeah. Rob. Yeah, that's awesome. And that X-Men book is super rare. As well, yeah. yeah. Joey, Joey told me, and I said, you know what? I, I he's like, when you set your sights on something, you kind of go for it, and it's always on your radar. But um, it's definitely a win. This is grand help to you guys, and you know, you got something sweet out the deal too. Yeah, it's awesome, awesome. I'm jelly of that. I bet Ken Worthing. Had wet dreams over. <laughs> yeah, actuality. When I got my hand, when I had the opportunity to buy it, he was the first person I talked to, and he was like, "Well, at least one of us have it." And I was like, "Well, at least you know it's still in the community." Dude, <laughs> Ken, Ken's probably having nightmares about that book. <laughs> That's yeah, awkward. But, but from what I know, as far as rarity goes, <laughs> uh, Kazi has five copies, and this is the fifth copy. So I know where the other four are, and he showed it all to me in a picture. And I said, well, I can almost say that I'm the only person in the U.S. that has one. So that's <laughs> kind of that one, that small little added bonus. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's not going to, yeah, I could see many. <laughs> no. All right. Oh, that's uh, it, it's getting <clears throat> ugly here. I know. 
<laughs> Sorry, Josh. Right. Sorry. Yeah, that's a tough one to follow. So this is probably my top pickup of the year. Oh man, that's pretty amazing good. choice. Amazing choice. Oh, so this, this is Olabino number forty-four from nineteen forty-three, Brazil. Um, this is the what is it? Flash Comics twenty-one from nineteen forty. So it came out three years after. But I mean, this book is. It's clean. The colors pop. It's even got, let's see if I can, those are the original staples. I mean, look at that. Ooh. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Someone took good care of that book in Brazil. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I had, to, I had to pick this up because it's dude. probably the cleanest Brazilian book I've ever seen. That is gorgeous, dude. Come on. Wow. Yeah, we're all throwing some heat out here. I'll just what's, have to what's, what's yeah. the order in there? Um, it's it's all Flash Comics twenty one. It has okay, all the so story. It's the original yep. one, is our actual reprint, which is not always common in Brazil. Yep, you, yep. you get a hot of stuff. Full series. Wow. Oh, all right. Um, well, I, I'm gonna go with this as my top because it, it's a rare bird and it's a set that I wasn't necessarily going to build. And then I got close enough and then I needed the bad boy and our friend, uh, Scott hooked me up. So I went with, uh, Oh yeah. Two, two, seven. That nice. is a pretty, pretty foreign man. Yes. That is an excellent choice. Mm -hmm. One I, I, of, if not my favorite Arabic book. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll see any others or not many others. I know there's a few floating out in the community, but not very many. And most of them are uh, really, really worn at the spine. This one, I mean, definitely has somewhere, but nowhere near what usually you'll see in them. And let's clarify, John, that is an original first printing Lebanese, correct? Correct. It does appear, yeah. though, that it's been um, trimmed up, but uh, it is an original printing. Not the not the reprint. Um, undetermined right. if it's from a bind because the spine is pretty nice for what it is, but it looks like maybe it was prepped to be bound at least. Uh -huh. so the colors mm -hmm. are strikingly sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is definitely beautiful. A good one. Beautiful. So. All right, we went pretty fast. Do, do we want to give uh, an alternate, alternate. Some alternate med? Yeah. I know I had yeah. one more. So. I got Matt, one to go. We'll, all right, Matt, we'll let you do one extra. Okay, in the spirit of our of our Arabic speaking brethren, this book is my alternate. Now it is a Hulk magazine, so it's a black and white magazine. It's got the cool, creepy clowns, which you must really like, right, John? <laughs> um, being a clown fan, but the reason this book is so special, there's two reasons. There's two of them. One. Rob, just like that clear backing board that uh, Josh sent me on one of his books, I used it for this book. Mm, nice. And this is the first reason. It was an ad for the upcoming Star Wars 1. This is So this is a back page ad. And then the other reason this book is so special is because I bought it from the translator at the publisher. This Ooh. is a true file copy. This book never made it onto the stands in Lebanon. This book stayed with the translator in his personal collection. It is a file copy. As a Star Wars fan, I am nerdgasming over it. It is rad. That is my alternate. Very nice. Awesome. Very nice. All right, Rob, what do you got? I'm going to say that uh, I want to just coin it, Josh. You're going to be the one person that started us getting those clear backing boards so we can see the <laughs> back of the book, too. I'm just going to go ahead and coin that. We're going to patent that to not, like today. But um, so you guys making me bring heat. So I can't go without talking oh! about it. <laughs> I can't go the without heat. talking about it. The heat has arrived. Now, I have to say, January 13th was when this book hit my hands raw and unpressed. We sent it off to a good friend of the uh, channel, Big Leg. Shout out to you. 
He pressed it up, cleaned it up real nice. And uh, I, we both said probably an 8-5 or a 9-0. But to see that 9-4, my That mind. makes, my, makes mm. my brain hurt, honestly. Yep. I, yeah. I, it also hurts my heart a little because I was like, I was going to buy that. No, I'll tell Rob about it. And then I'm like, oh, a 9-4. Good God, hey. what was I doing? <laughs> hey, you were thinking about your friends. I you I was, but man, friends, John. I can say it, this: the karma, the karma of it all is, is that with this, I I know I've gave you a couple books that you probably take a while to find. So the karma, no, you did, you there. did. It just, yeah, it's, so. it's one where you're like, oh, I like karma, karma, but I like <laughs> nine <laughs> four. <laughs> nine hey, four that's the collector in it, right? Yeah, can't deny it. That's a collector, nine but four big booty. Mm -hmm. Man, that is mind blowing. I this got a bunch of three, topic, I got a couple three fives. Does that mean I got like a nine five when I add them together? <laughs> yeah, it would be a red label at that point, right? <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. 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 I love it. Love it. All right, Josh. I, yeah, he's he's bringing a lot of heat. This is terrible. And uh, you, yeah. get to, you get to sit behind Mom, that. Hopefully, big, you got one more good one. The big guy. Right. I, for my alternates, I I couldn't not show Cortez stuff. Um, so I had I had two that tied for. So we got we got this guy. Oh my! Oh God. man, I forgot oh, about that. that. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorites. That is <clears throat> that is the ultimate creepy clown cover. Yeah, yeah that's that's top dog right there. So yeah, this is from 1953. Um, I like to call it the crime suspense 22 before there was crime suspense 22. <laughs> a little harsher even. <laughs> Dude, I love it. That, and that then amazing. I had, I had that, this one, cause oh, this was one another too. Yes. amazing one of his early covers. This is yeah. also from 1953. Mm. Rad. So yep. great. I'm just going to say this out loud that you guys made us do this. These videos <laughs> showing these amazing books and graded video games. Ronnie, I am totally jealous. But man, y'all made us do this. Y'all made <laughs> us do this. So you know. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll round it out. I went with something a little more modern. I stayed away from horror for once. and uh, But I've, I've shown this, I think, once before. But it's just, it it is amazing to me. Um, Luke Cage. Yeah. CBCS 9.0, the Italian edition. I mean, we all fight about Italian uh, 181s and finding them above 9.0. I I can't even imagine how this one happened. Yeah, that's clean. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah, with that all black, black cover. Is crisp. I, I almost am tempted to send it off to get it graded again because I'm not sure I see as many defects as uh, it grades at, so... It is a true beauty. You might need to send it to nope. CGC. Uh, we'll think about it. I just hate to take it out of this case at this point. Mm -hmm. That's oh. beautiful, man. Yeah, that's beautiful. beautiful. So. I love how they just use how the Italians just used his name too. Just Luke. It's just Luke. That's <laughs> all right. It's neat. I I like it. Yeah, it pops. It pops. Big fan. Um, yeah, so great. We had some. Uh, Wonderful books thrown out today. Uh, just want to say thank you to the guys for coming on. Uh oh, do you got one more, Rob? <laughs> one one. All right, we'll Cortez, let you show. Man. We let we we really are showcasing a lot of Cortez, but um, we just let you know that if this this is Brazil's equivalent to uh, Frazetta, if you had to really pick, it's yeah, probably, I think um, you can do that. I would agree. Yeah, this, is, this is Brazil's comparison. Just to show you how brilliant Cortez's work really is. It's striking. You know, you see the emotion in her face and you see the blood dripping. It's it's amazing, guys. Cortez is really is really a great artist. I'm not oh, yeah. it's, more, it's yeah. almost more art than comic art at that point. That's yeah. what you're really looking yeah. at. His attention Definitely. to detail was spot My on. Bruce Cortez is in the mail. It's coming on, it's coming to me. Mm -hmm. wow. It's that cool Drac cover. Yeah. Nice. I'll remember that. Yeah. Where the, where the eye is like off. It's like weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the mail coming to me. I, I'm really excited of owning my first Cortez. Very nice. 
All right. Well, we had a good show. I appreciate you all coming on. I appreciate the community. We had you on last week to showcase. We'll have to do a little bit more of that. And uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, if you will. I mean, let's grow this hobby. Let's get some more people in it and uh, see what other treasures we can dig up, man. And, uh, right. and 2021 is going to be a better year, I hope. 2021 yeah. will be a good year. We will be back shortly. I think we're working on another uh, set build set. So we'll see you soon.